figured 2022 European F5J Championship. Very nice field. I'm sure you've checked it from my previous competitions here in 2015 and 18. Very large open flat area where the only obstacle where the thermals can form is actually the camp. I think the preparation time for the first senior fly-off has started. Pilots are taking their places on the flight line. We have 14 pilots in the fly-offs. Maximum two from each country. So no country managed to get all of three of their pilots into their fly-offs. airfield is operating as normal they are coordinating their flights with timing from the competition so when we are not flying the big planes can fly at their leisure which is very nice to see because my experience in Slovenia for example uh, the big guys are very nervous just thinking about the idea of having a RC competition at the airfield. So I heard talking to pilots that the past days they had issues with radio control with the over that roof, so one of the possible suspects is that antenna over there. Don't know what's being transmitted there, but I've checked tower. It has a bunch of microwave links set up that are like flying over across the field over to those towers there in the distance behind the tree line. So there's at least one microwave link that's intersecting the area. Uh, maybe that could have cost it, I don't know. So the interesting uh, information from those discussions is that at least three different uh, RC systems had issues and one was working fine, so also something to look into. So let me now move to a position closer to the flight line. As it is now Friday afternoon, the plan is to fly two rounds fly-offs seniors and two rounds juniors today and tomorrow Saturday morning juniors will have the privilege to start the fly-off rounds in the morning and seniors will then continue and we hopefully finish by noon. I think the plan is to fly four rounds each so there will be plenty of time for any potential reflies. The weather, as you can see, barely any cloud, lots of haze, so high pressure area dominating, uh, barely any wind. All the wind that we have is mostly caused by thermals unsticking from the ground, so right now we have 
legs doing nothing. And I feel just a very slight breeze into my back. So the tactic now is to actually check all the flags, all the wind socks, whatever have you around, all the tapes and examine them over the white area and see what they're doing. For example, the wind sock there at the airport, that's one obvious thing. Then we have a bunch of flags there in front of the hangar. And then lots of tapes that uh, teams have set up over their tents. And the flags, of course. So you use all of these indicators to picture yourself a mental image of what's happening in the air around you and then you use that image to decide how you will actually do your flight so even the birds here I haven't seen any in the afternoon but there were lots of seagulls in the morning so to the East, behind those trees, behind the camp, there's actually a lake, a body of water, so we have a population of seagulls around here. Haven't seen any raptors, just one or two, and they were just crossing the area. So it looks like all the mice died out in the fields due to the lack of food, which was caused by the drought. So. As you can see now the field is green, mostly, but if you check uh, videos on the gliding world championship that was held here a couple of weeks ago, the field was dusty and brown and completely burned out. So there was a couple of storms beginning of the week, uh, when uh, Sunday and Monday and towards the Tuesday night and they dumped enough water for these fields to turn green basically overnight. Okay, a few seconds to start. Let's see what the best 14 pilots will do. Low and slow. And that's really low. Right now, still, I don't see anyone higher than maybe 30 meters. But they spread wide area over the field. So last five seconds, full power to get more energy into the model. Not in the form of height, but in the form of speed. So that will be very interesting to follow what happens now. So remember, it's mid-afternoon, half past three. And this is time when thermals start to weaken and even start to die out. So around six, there are basically no thermals anymore that you could use to do a reasonably good flight. actually check what I'm recording. This is getting interesting. Okay, autofocus is again playing with me. Maybe I can do this. This group is still low and I see one plane on the ground already and the other group here is also even lower. And then there are two more planes behind the camp. Still there's no wind, 
no indication that there's any thermal willing to unstick. So this will be a struggle. challenge at flying at this low height is that you want to keep your energy, you want to keep your speed. Flying too low will make you sink faster. But if you are not in a thermal, you can only gain this energy and this speed by sacrificing the height you have. So the result is that you then land sooner or later. The rest of the flock now moved just overhead me, still only maybe 50-60 meters high, so they gained some height. But they are now directly above me. That would be a bit difficult to make videos of, so let's focus on these guys here. Wind is now increasing, you see the flags moving and I would fly in the direction this wind is blowing. So the flock above me is certainly doing that. Let's see what these guys behind the camp will do. I would also move more towards the right. Unless there's something good where I would already be. Now three planes here again, hopefully they don't get too close to each other. We've seen quite a lot of touches in the air uh, during the preliminary rounds. 
uh, but luckily no reflies. Apparently there was no serious damage and no uh, inability to complete the task. So I've seen at least three touches today happening high in the thermal that resulted just in a quick spin, couple of turns, recovery and then guys just continue flying. These guys now did move to the right, but I'm afraid they are too late. So the wind is still blowing in that direction. Not sure if they'll be able to make it. Especially that guy who's now behind the tents. And I can't see him anymore from here. These two guys now got something and if their luck holds, they'll be able to finish the flight. The rest of the flock is already over 200 meters. They climbed out successfully. Flying like this really takes a toll on your nerves. You have to be confident in your model, in your flying skills, in your ability to read the air. And that only comes from countless hours of practice flying and decades of flying at competitions. So I hear the organizers are calling the next group, which will be the same. But that means there's about four minutes of flying left. And that means those two guys made the round just fine. Thank you. 
Two minutes to go, and I wouldn't be confident with that height, so it still makes sense to gain maybe 20 more meters just to return to the landing point. That deserves congratulations. So it's not the first time we are hearing an applause here. Uh, during the past days we saw lots of rescues from low height. Uh, lots of flights that deserved an applause. So, proper field for that kind of flying. runway here is oriented 1634 so almost exactly north-south which means right now we have a crosswind and this plane is taking off while our pilots are waiting for their turn to start. I again expect downwind action, that's why I moved to the upper side of the corridor to get more action. seconds and these are the start fights. So 
just this last guy on position 14 is looking my, my way, so he's somewhere behind my back. And the other guys, I think, are already in reasonably good air. So let's see what the lower ones will do. delayed their start. Probably technical reason. I don't see any tactical reason why you would do, want to do that now. And he's joining the flock. I'm going for the safe choice at the moment. the noise. Must have been another touch there, didn't see it. And looks like they all continue to fly. It's getting pretty crowded over there now. And I'm sure this is not the only thermal around here right now because the guy who started behind me is now over here also gained some height and he's also getting himself blown away by the wind or carried away slowly while gaining height. I think all 14 planes are now visible, which is quite a rare sight to see. So the challenge now besides avoiding crashing is to gain enough height that will allow you to return back to the landing point. The guys at the top have no problem. Lower ones are still fighting for that. So I see the topmost guys already flying back. They are like 400 meters or so, I would say. That would be just somewhere here. Yeah, there's one. And he's the highest. wind has picked up now, that's interesting, it means something's happening over there, which is probably good news for the guys that are high, maybe more of a challenge for the guys that aren't high. Now the question is what is high enough in this case? With wind uh, increasing in strength, you also need to be higher to come back successfully. But since we still have some minutes to go, I think nine and a half minutes of flying to do, that this gust will just pass. So 
flying far away is another thing you have to be ready at such competitions, especially at this level. So you have to be able to control your, your plane through a circle even though you don't, you don't see it at certain positions in the circle when it's oriented towards you or away from you. So you have to have a mental model how your plane flies and just fly it blindly, trust it to do the right thing. Of course, this presumes that your radio is working as it should and then you that you have no issues at these distances. So I see someone pumping there at the top. Let's see if I can zoom on. Looks like he got it back under control. So having a cloud as a background uh, is much better than blue sky. For the visibility of the model you see it much more clearly. And this kind of erratic movement usually happens when you lose sight of your model. And then you start doing large control inputs so that model presents a larger surface towards you and then you can see it again. Hopefully you don't break it that way. So it can easily happen that you gain lots of speed and then give it full elevator or aileron uh, input and that's, that can be a lot of stress on the model itself. I see another one doing funny things there. So another interesting topic of discussion in this situation is how you how to set up your failsafe. Because you have different possibilities and different ones would be handled in different situations. So, in a situation like this, flying far, you maybe want to set up your failsafe to give you some aileron deflection maybe. So you push your model in a turn and hope that, in hope that you see it again in a few seconds. At some other times you would want to have failsafe set up with full flap so that the model uh, slows down and hopefully lands somewhere out of sight without any damage. But in some other situations you would want to have your failsafe do nothing and just keep all the servos in neutral. So this depends a bit on the situation. I'm not entirely sure what the best fail-safe setup is. So I see now people running on the field towards the model and now returning back. So this is either because of visibility or because of radio issues, I don't know. But certainly this is flying far enough that it is uncomfortable. Now we have four minutes and something to finish. And let me move.
this will now give us a good view on landing. And I think you can also see the clock. Three minutes, 45 to go. Everyone is. I see just two planes at the moment. Uh -huh, there are a few more. Okay, so most of them already returned overhead. So we will be able to fly the proper landing pattern, whatever they have in mind. And I expect to hear some fast descents from altitude with some nice noises. Yes, two and a half minutes and planes are still at like 300 meters. So what I like to do, in case I have enough height, is to park myself somewhere overhead with one minute of time remaining and then fly 30 seconds downwind, turn and fly 30 seconds back to the landing. That's kind of how a traffic pattern would look like with this kind of airplanes. At least that's how I imagine it. This has to be corrected, of course, for the wind direction and wind speed. Sometimes you have to turn earlier. Nice. No collisions, no crashes. Good job. <laughs> 